Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today joining me is Sri Bala Gautamanji, and we are going to be talking about the latest list of candidates that the BJP has put in Tamil Nadu. We are going to be taking an in-depth look at two or three constituencies where the chances of BJP winning are bright, and there is one difference between the opinions given from other guests to Bala Gautamanji. Bala Gautamanji is constantly on the ground. He knows the pulse of the ground. He is constantly traveling the length and breadth of Tamil Nadu. And he knows, I think, what the voter is thinking. And by the way, what we think in our studios is perhaps some, somewhat different from what they think. So we're going to try and give you that perspective also. So let's welcome Bala Gautamanji. Bala Gautamanji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaste, Namaste. Tell me, <coughs> Shri Namaste. Thank you so much, sir. And we are going to jump right into what I would say as an interesting uh, decision by the BJP. The first time I heard this was on Monday morning when I went live with Rajagopalan. He said that uh, chances of uh, Annamali contesting from Coimbatore are very good. And if he wins, chances of him becoming a minister at the central cabinet are also very good. So let us just take that as the takeaway, like, you know, that the positive for Annamali so he can get administrative experience and all that good stuff. We are going to start by analyzing Annamalai's chances in Coimbatore. And I uh, I yield the floor to you, Bala Gautamanji. We'll start with that. Let's see what are the forces arrayed against him, how or what he needs to do to win this one. Over to you, sir. A very good beginning as far as the campaign is concerned for Annamalai started with the Prime Minister's visit in Coimbatore. It's a very good road show. And again, I... I have to applaud Anamalai because it is one thing as a president of BJP, he has done an excellent job, which I have been advocating for a long time, which uh, uh, no previous party president has done. Anamalai made Narendra Modi ji to pay tributes to the 54 martyrs of Coimbatore bomb blasts. And uh, it is a move, this is something which I am advocating the party as well as. Hindu organizations to do it as a major event every year that people have to understand what the price that we have paid for Islamic terror. And uh, this particular issue is not being highlighted for a long period of time. And this time Prime Minister went there. And that is a time where you have to see where the state government is letting off the bomb blast accused, not accused, they are the convicts. All the life convicts, convicts the, state, the state government has been, uh, you know, uh, they are being let off. Firstly, uh, they have uh, let them off in parole. And uh, some of them were, uh, some of them are premature release. And some papers are still pending with the Honorable Governor. And uh, uh, Narendra Modi ji paying tributes to them. And this is one thing that the party has to pick up. It's a very good the cue the party has to pick up. The thing is, the people who really blasted your city off are let out by the DMK. And I am standing with the people who really sacrificed their life in Coimbatore. And uh, in a way, okay, elections is uh, all about polarization. And it is a very good thing that BJP can polarize Hindu votes based on this. And this is a very good start. And number two, BDMK uh, is not, uh, uh, cannot avail the services of Sindhil Balaji because he is in Puran. And their Kongu built politics. It revolves around uh, Sindhil Balaji and Sindhil Balaji is made the trump card by the DMK um, uh, to establish itself in the Kongu belt, which is uh, not a fertile ground for DMK for a quite for a very long period of time. And this is another advantage Anamalai carries. And number three, for an information, any candidate other than Anamalai is going to be there in Coimbatore. I can say that BJP has got no hope. Since Anamalai is the candidate, you have a hope. Because why I say that you have a hope, I'm not sure about his victory because Coimbatore, you have six... Um, Assembly segments, it is Palladam, Sulur, Kaundambalayam, Coimbatore North, Coimbatore South and Shinganalur. 
so basically within the city limit bjp has got a good percent but on the other side i mean uh, the uh, outer area uh, i am not sure how bjp can uh, pull in the votes because uh, around 12 to 13 lakhs will be uh, votes will be polled and this is what my prediction as of today was we have to see how much vote will get polled on the day that we will come to know when the campaign goes on so ADMK is not going to let this election lightly because they have two monies there. They're heavyweights, Tangamani and Velumani. So with these two guys, they will not allow the uh, percentage of votes to dip for ADMK. They, very, they are very surely, we know that they are going to lose. But they won't allow ADMK to lose deposit because their uh, prestige is at stake if that is going to happen. And it is one crucial point that you need to understand as far as Coimbatore is concerned. And even in the previous election, BJP lost even with alliance with ADMK. That is something that we need to note. And uh, uh, my understanding of uh, the previous losses of BJP when it is in alliance with ADMK, Tangamani and uh, Velumani, even though the candidate CP Radhakrishnan is close to Jailalitha, uh, I feel uh, some undercutting has happened even with the, the candidate who is close to Jayalalitha, to the BJP candidate. So that is their track record. This is something that uh, BJP has to understand because people say that, okay, Coimbatore is uh, for us in a platter. It is not the case. This is something the BJP has to understand. And BJP is uh, the knack of, uh, you know, winning the opposition over to their camp. And BJP has, I think, that they have mastered this art. So if at all BJP is sure of sending Anomaly to Parliament, one thing that BJP has to do, they have to take care of these two monies, Tangamani and Velumani. And I know that BJP can even, they can pull even Mallikarjuna Karge overnight to their party. BJP is having that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they are experts Magnetic in that. power, sir. Magnetic power. <laughs> Magnetic power. Okay, so people say that unscrupulous or something else, but you know, uh, nothing is fair in love and war. This is what we say. So these things are, uh, I mean, quite common in politics. This is what all part political parties are doing. So BJP has to concentrate on that particular point because Coimbatore is not going to be an easy seat for BJP to win based on the data which I have analyzed and uh, even, I mean, my ground level study of the things is, how BJP is going to uh, play with these two factors, that is Tangamani and uh, uh, Velumani factor. And number two, the Hindu polarization is on, but uh, will it be able to win the seat? And this is one point where I am not sure about till now, because I think, sir, we met in Coimbatore, am I right? Yes. 10 yes. days back? Yes, yes. So I yes. am just touring the, that constituency a week or 10 days back. We met there. So when I, when I am going I mean, going around these constituencies, yes, BJP is going to get uh, better. It is going to perform far better than ADMK, no doubt about it. But since ADMK is a factor which is going to divide the anti-DMK vote, then it becomes tougher for BJP to scrape through and this is my understanding about the constituency so bjp has to take up three or four things as far as coimbatore is concerned point number one polarization of hindu votes they have to do it there should not be any second thought in that that bjp i i hope that bjp will do and number two what the next problem bjp is going to face is the prestige of admk which admk will try to defend its prestige in that Coimbatore area because Congo Bastion, they don't want to lose. Look, those two are gounders. EPS is again a counter. Again, if Anomaly is going to come up as a big leader, then the counter uh, community will gravitate towards BJP. So all these leaders' political life will be in ruins if Anomaly is going to emerge as a leader from that particular community. So they won't allow that easily to happen. Because, uh, you know, this is for which they have spent crores and crores for all, say, around 10 years or so, they have spent crores on that. So it is a high gamble for them. And this factor, 
is what BJP has to understand that even BJ, I mean, uh, ADMK will not let that go so easily. Uh, I don't know how they are going to handle this situation. And point number three, uh, it is not only the counter community alone, which is a very dominant force in that constituency. Yes, they are socially dominant, but numerically there are many communities. Tevar community may be having an one and a half lakh votes or so. Nadar community will be having close to one lakh votes or so. So they, there are communities. And I mean, in my understanding, uh, the political leadership of BJP locally, they are dominated by counter community. So how they are going to get the other communities on board? What? idea that they are going to I mean what strategy they are going to play out to get these things and this is one question that we need to answer another major community as a block Arundhadir is a major block I mean uh, people are having very different views uh, BJP is promoting El Murugan as um, the uh, prominent Dalit face of Tamil Nadu BJP but as far as that community, is, he, he comes from the Sarandadir community, but he doesn't have that acceptability inside that community. And this is what I understood uh, with my interaction with people from those communities. So how BJP is going to attract to those votes? And uh, this is a million dollar question, which I can't answer right now. If again we are coming back after 10 15 days, I can let you know what the situation is. So, oh, uh, these are sir. the great areas we we'll talk about it. Ne next week, we'll talk about it, sir. Annamalai is the most important uh, candidate. You see, if you ask me, Gautamanji, BJP will leave no stone unturned to ensure the victory of Annamalai. And here's why it is so important you do all the hard yards 2% to 22% today. BJP's uh, uh, popularity in Tamil Nadu from 2% he has got up to this point. 22% you mean you can argue no it is only 18%. Fine 18%. Whatever it is then you are also saying now you shall work for a difficult constituency where you are standing which means his 24 hours time schedule is going to be spent mostly trying to make sure he wins. So that is one thing I see as a downside uh, Balagovatamanji. Please talk about that. What do you think is going to how is going to impact uh, the rest of the state? No, I mean, not only that, because I mean, I, I mean, I just want to add some point to that particular constituency. Please, please go ahead, sir. Please uh, go you ahead. say it is from 2 to 22 percent. I don't say that. Because in 2014, when BJP goes to the elections, that is the first election after 1967. An alliance is formed under a national party. This happened in 2014. BJ, I mean, under BJP, an alliance is formed, DMDK, PMK, MDMK, all these, you know, smaller parties. At that time, Jalalitha and Karunanidhi were around. Now you don't have a very credible leader in DMK or ADMK, I mean, uh, not today. But at that time, Jalalitha and uh, Jaya, I mean, uh, Karunanidhi were there. Despite them, the BJP-led alliance scored close to 18 to 19 percent votes. At that time, Modi is not a popular leader. You don't have a central government. You don't have EDs. You don't have CBIs at your disposal. And uh, uh, look, you are in the most disadvantageous position. But still, the organizational missionary of the party is able to muster that much percentage of votes. And again, one of the main plank of BJP at that particular point of time is... Um, Minority scholarship is that which brought BJP into the forefront in Tamil Nadu when those two leaders were alive. So that particular organizational component of BJP, that got eroded after 2040. That is something that we need to understand. So what Anomaly has done, the Josh which was there in 2014 with all these disadvantages, which BJP lost due to its own shortcomings, has now been restored. And this is one thing that we need to understand. So it is the 2% to 14% is not an easy bubble to come because already you have a very strong base that you have set up in 2014 itself. And now you are building over that. The problem now BJP faces is not because of that. It is because of the division of anti-DMK votes. 
that is the lone issue for bjp now bjp front is going to be the second one admk is going to be the third as far as the symbol is concerned for uh, two leaf symbol that is the admk symbol there will be not less than one and a half to two lakh votes bare minimum for the symbol anywhere in tamil nadu so that will decide the winning margin between any two parties in a tricornod contest so coimbatore is that is why i said it the disadvantage is just because not because of the strength of dmk only because of the division of non dmk vote that needs to be minimum minimum uh, minimized for that bjp has to play all tricks in the book and bjp is you know i don't want to mention it again because they have all the elements with them to play around i hope that this house is raided today so i hope some other yeah, good okay. rights come up i think yeah. this will be kedriwal's house is raided and he might even be arrested even as we speak so that is happening that threat is happening on a separate one we'll we'll touch upon that when we have more information somebody already pointed it out so we are pointing it out too sir one small thing take away right because we have two or three more constituencies that i'd like to go at in some depth because these people have the track record and we can find out whether they are going to be able to pull it their way or not so last question is let us say we agree that at this point they are around 19% in coimbatore constituency from 19 how much as a percentage do you think anomaly needs to raise in order to win look uh, it has to dmk will be scoring around 30% 30 Three zero, around thirty percent. They will, uh, they will try to get it because they have the government at their disposal. Bare minimum, I am talking. If they are going to put up more efforts, then they will even touch up to thirty-five to thirty-eight percent. And this is what DMK can do in Coimbatore, uh, based on you know, you know how our police works, and you know how our various other departments work, and we know how uh, things work in the ground, and you know how money works in the ground. we all know that in tamil nadu how because they have the network to pay every voter so they have already an established network and they are master in that craft so they will uh, use all their resources to defeat anamalai because if anamalai wins 2026 elections is a gone case for dmk and this is how dmk will think because when we are thinking of uh, the strength of bjp then you need to think about the other side too what is their strength and what they will do and they to have now look there are three prominent politicians now uh, i mean uh, the youngsters in tamil nadu politics one is udayanidhi and another one is annamalai and the third one who is aspiring for a long time is seema these guys have another 30 years in politics not less than that so they all will think that the future politics should be in their hands so these three guys will play almost all tricks in the book seema is now as a non player since it is a parliament election so both these parties will try to play that so this is how the politics is going to be so uh, if that is going to if they are using all their resources to reach 35 to 36% then bjp has to go to 38% if that is going to happen admk has to come down to 15% i mean 10% is the best thing for bjp in that scenario because for the uh, i mean uh, nam tamilar will take some votes some other parties will take some small small vote and other some nota will be there and all these things will be there so bjp has to plan for that much amount of vote even in a tricornod contest which because i don't think that admk will go below 10 to 15% in coimbatore because it, their prestige is at stake so let me ask you two questions uh, associated with this the first question is why is the bjp putting anamalai through all this stress when he could be effectively campaigning for all the remaining 38 candidates the length of breadth of tamil nadu why tie him down in this one constituency well party may think that anamalai's entry into the fray will uh, give an impetus to the campaign and away they say that okay uh, because the opposition will say yes anamalai is afraid of contesting so this is one thing the opposition will say number one number two from the day one onwards i am telling that anamalai is uh, having an idea of contesting the elections i have been telling from day one onwards that he will contest either tirupur or coimbatore or tirupur this is what i said i mean uh, it happens as per plan and uh, 
uh, he contested uh, in Aravakuruchi and lost, lost elections. So he just want to be in fray and, you know, and uh, every politician and again after I mean, going through this Yatra and the Yatra concluded at Palladam. That, against, that again comes under the Coimbatore constituency and Prime Minister came there. And again, Prime Minister came to Coimbatore constituency again. Roadshow. So yeah. these are these are indicators for you to say that he is going to contest from that constituency. So it's almost it's a known uh, scenario. But I don't think that why people, some of many journalists say that Kanamala is not going to contest. I don't know how they are, I mean, uh, anticipating this because certain things that you need to... Uh, understand from basic political um, maneuvering which is going on in local constituencies. So it's a known fact that he is going to contest. And uh, uh, for that, he has done some good uh, groundwork in that area. But uh, uh, I mean, this is my only apprehension because this is the presence of ADMK is a major issue for him. Nothing other than that. Otherwise, it will be an easy win for him. Number two, these two are shrewd operators. The Tangamani and Velmani, they're very shrewd operators. By sticking with ADMK, they are actually endangering their own future also. They are the money people. Surely, if they can strike a bargain in exchange for their wholehearted support to the BJP, maybe they'll get a, a Rajya Sabha seat and become a Minister of State in the center. Would do you I'm think that that would be a carrot that would work? I am not sure whether BJP has already done any backroom discussions with them. Because I am not sure about it. Because BJP is known for it. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Because switching over a candidate at the last two moments, these things, these tricks BJP is playing all over the country. I don't know whether BJP has planned any move there. If they have done that, yeah. then it is sure. See, th this is basically a must-win battle. Uh, no point in putting the president of the state in a constituency. If that no, that is not the case. Because when you are putting your president in the campaign, and again, if the uh, your president uh, is, I mean, uh, uh, the thing is having an, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a possibility of getting, because Coimbatore is one seat BJP is aspiring for a long time. Am I right? Yes. Now, who else can come I mean, uh, contest in Coimbatore other than Anamale? If somebody else is going to be there, BJP will be in the third party in the contest. You are making it as a campaign just because Anamale is there. Otherwise, you are well, you don't you are not going to have a chance in Coimbatore. Good point, sir. Um, let's now move on to a couple of other very important candidacies. And and viewers, please like this video. You may be not hearing everything that you think is what is the truth because again, Bala Gautamanji brings a lot of experience from the ground. And there is something called as winning elections. That's not so easy. Personal charisma, whatever. It only gets, takes you some, you know, it gets you into the house. But to get to the actual, you know, win the seat is, is something else. Now let's go to take a look at the yeah, former. score around the 6 lakhs in that constituency, not less than that. Around 6 to 6 lakhs or something else. I mean, if the ADMK is going to take around 1.5 to 2 lakhs, then the DMK will end up around 5, 4.5, 5 lakhs or 5.5 I mean, 5 lakhs. Then you have to go up to six, six and a half. That means almost one lakh per constituency, assembly constituency. And, and, and you know, that's very a very high polling rate. Very that high polling rate. That's a monumental polling task. That's a very monumental yeah. task. So, so that's that is our uh, you know view at this thing. And let's take a look at the next candidate. I want us to talk about Gautamanji is essentially from Kanyakumari district. He has grown up there as a child. He has seen all his. Uh, even evolving years has been in the district of Kanyakumari. I may not be exactly sure about where in that city. You can talk about that a little bit, Gautamanji. The candidacy of Pon Radha Krishnan. There are other guests who have come on P Guru's channel who said if Ponar stands in Kanyakumari, he is going to definitely lose. Now, I would like you to tell us because you have seen this thing grow in, and and the, the way the BJP has grown in the in Kanyakumari constituency. Over to you, sir. Look, you don't have any other candidate other than Pundrada Krishna. Because you have to see. Uh, ascendancy of Pundrada Krishna, this is something that you need to do. From 1982 onwards, from the Mandaikadu riots, he is a field worker. And he has carried the party, you know, in 19... Uh, 
89 elections, if I'm not wrong, yes, in 1989 elections. Uh, BJP scored around 30 plus thousand votes in Kanyakumari parliament. At that time, it's an Nagarkoil parliamentary constituency. This is what you secured. You were nowhere because in 1984, you won the Padmanabhaburam election con constituency in the name of Hindu Munani, not in the name of BJP that you need to understand. Before BJP sending an MLA into the Tamil Nadu assembly, it is in the name of Hindu Munani. The, that is something that we need to underline. People say because of secularism, only BJP wins. It's not that. The first uh, member in the Tamil Nadu Assembly who spoke for the Hindu is from Hindu Munani. He contested in the lion symbol. So you won that constituency, Padmanabhaburam. You BJP in, in BJP symbol, Mr. M. R. Gandhi came second in Kolachal. He lost with a very narrow margin. Again, you lost the third constituency. You came second there. That is in Thiruvattar constituency, again by a, a, a narrow margin to Communist Party. That again, you contested in the Hindu Mununi symbol. And this was Kanyakumari district in 1984. There were again some problems within the Hindu organization, some breakaway uh, so people broke away from uh, Hindu Mununi, BJP, RSS, and all these things happened at that particular point of time. The party was nowhere in 1989. That is what you can say, a party which was number two in two assembly constituencies and number one in one assembly constituencies can't even get its deposit in 1989 just because of all these defections. At that time, Pondradakshan came to that district as a Hindu Manani full-time worker. 1991, he contested. Uh, I mean, at that time, he was a full-time worker of Hindu Manani, but he, he contested as a BJP in BJP ticket. He secured 1 lakh 2,000 and odd votes. It is almost he tripled the amounts what people of vote we polled in 1989. From then they, it's a hundred one point six seven lakhs and then point two point odd lakhs and then it come up to, to three point odd lakhs and this is how the progression of Kanyakumari district went up. And uh, unfortunately, after that particular period of time, what happened in Tamil in Kanyakumari district? After Pun Radha Krishna, no Hindu leader emerged in Kanyakumari district. The entire ascendancy of BJP in Kanyakumari district is just because of Hindu polarization. So no Hindu leader has emerged in Kanyakumari district. So the onus was on Pun Radha Krishna to win elections as well as to take care of the other things. So there was a leadership vacuum in Kanyakumari district for the past 10, 15 years which I am telling in many of my shows that this is something that Hindu organizations have to look into. I mean, 52 to 54% is the minority vote. 48% is around the Hindu vote, around 46 to 48%. On any polling day, the Christians and Muslims will poll more than 75 to 80%, and the Hindu polling will be around 60 to 70%. So taking that into account, it will be 45-55 or 44-56. So you are not going to get any minority vote. I mean, BJP may think that they will get, okay, they will get some handful of votes, some minority wala people, you know, they have their party minority cell. You will get some votes, not more than 50,000. 25 to 50,000 is the maximum minority vote you have to get. So how much Hindu vote you are going to polarize? And how much vote ADMK is going to divide from the uh, consolidated oh, Christian oh. votes. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So, okay. So the elections in Kanyakumari district is basically a polarized election. Kanyakumari is now in the last two three elections. Kanyakumari constituency when it from Nagarkovil and it changed to Kanyakumari district uh, constituency, it has got an advantage. Kanyakumari assembly segment, which was previously a part of Trichandur parliament, it becomes a part of Kanyakumari parliament. That is a Hindu majority assembly. So these two assembly, that is Nagar Koyal and Kanyakumari, these two assembly segments const constitute around 30 to 35 percent of the total votes. And this is predominantly Hindu. The other two answer constituencies are 50-50 and the Kaliur is almost 70% Christian. 
So how BJP is going to score in these two assembly segments is going to be vital. Because whatever loss they are going to uh, suffer in Kuliur assembly constituency, they have to vote it in Kanyagumari. The other two segments, they have to revert it in Nagar Kovil. And the other municipality has to remain 50-50. That is the only chance for BJP to win that particular constituency. Okay, if it is not going to be Pandrada August, and then who else is your candidate? Vijay Dharani. Because you have not cultivated any Hindu leader there. What, what about again, Vijay Dharani? Sir, okay. Uh, I mean, people who are hearing my uh, interview today, okay, I am I'm being uh, open on this. Some people may disagree or some people even may troll we in Facebook. We want you to be open, sir. sir we okay, want I don't know. Some people yeah. even they may troll. But I don't uh, have Doesn't any matter. issue on that. I don't have any yeah. issue on that. Look, in Kanyakumari district, yes, there is a Hindu consolidation. But in my experience, even in organizations, even in Hindu organizations, over a period of time, you have developed caste politics inside. Number two, Vijay Dharani is not from the Nadar community, which is the majority community in that district. I am sure people from the Nadar community will not do go vote to any community. This is a kind of caste politics that has set in that particular district for the last 15-20 years. It was not there before. The last 15, 20 years, I am seeing it. People from Hindu organizations may disagree with me, but this is the truth. And this is something which I have experienced in each and every panchayat of this district because I have toured every panchayat of that constituency. Number one. Number two, she belongs to the Vellalar community. That community has got maximum votes in uh, Kanyakumari and Nagar Goyal assembly segments where Vijay Dharani has got absolutely no say. And again, in these two assembly segments, some, I mean, one uh, large chunk of the people from those communities are DMK leaders. How politically, I don't understand how things will work. Because, uh, you know, uh, when you are working in a particular constituency or analyzing a constituency, you need to analyze it both ways. Otherwise, you will miss the bus. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. You know, somebody takes a Padayatra and then he's going to win hands down everywhere. That's what they are trying happen. to give. I can yeah. tell you again, there is an advantage for Pandrada Krishnan this time. That advantage, because we are asking for every constituency, you are asking me positives and negatives. Yes, yes. So, workers of Hindu organizations and on BJP. They are not happy with Pun Krishnan. That is the major minus point. And this is one thing that I observed in the field. Positive thing about Pun Krishnan, there is an image that apart from Pun Krishnan, nobody can bring development to the Kanyakuma, to the district. And this is an image of our Pun Krishnan among the neutral voters. But now the onus is on the party and the Hindu cadres to bury these differences and work towards that. Because now, there is a possibility for the Christian votes to divide. The reason is the Christian fishermen contribute around 1.5 to 1.7 lakh votes in Kanyakumari. And there is a demand by the Christian fishermen that a Christian fisherman is to be fielded as a candidate because they are the ones who are voting via DMK repeatedly. So the DMK front has given the seat to the Congress. Mostly Vijay Vasant will be contesting. ADMK has interestedly, interestingly, they have fielded a Christian fisherman as a candidate. So the possibility of a Christian vote division is there. But you know, the church is more powerful than anything else in that district because the priest decide, he will decide whom the lality has to vote for. And this is how the election things goes. And this depends on the ADMK's, ADMK candidates' uh, capacity to win over the local clergy, church-wise, in the coastal areas, and to create a frenzy 
that this is the only party that has uh, you know recognized a christian fisherman if this is going to find some traction but possibility is minimum because you mean to say um, a christian is concerned he will forget his uh, caste he will forget his party he will forget his language when the priest comes before and i mean you know he uh, lifts his both his hands and said artu kutigale viriyan paambugale immediately everything changes this is how elections happens in kanyakumari district because i am a witness to it for a long period of time so it, it depends on the capacity of the admk candidate to promote himself as a credible christian alternative to the congress dmk front and if he is able to do it ponradha krishnan will win if he is not able to do it point number 1 and number 2 bjp and hindu organizations have to wholeheartedly work and this is point number 2 if these two things are going to go simultaneously i think you have more chances for nagarkoil to win than coimbatore but these two things have to happen wonderful sir look viewers you may agree with us or not agree with us this is the ground reality the this has been done post mandal 30 40 years now telling people that this is what you need to do this is what you need to do and people have taken advantage of that sir the latest information today is the mohan c lazarus foundation the fcra license has been cancelled uh, would that impact this election in tamil nadu no it's not going to be there because the thing is again i can tell you bjp has missed several opportunity to polarize tamil nadu communally this bjp has to do because all other parties have done that sdpi joined hands with admk and admk has spoken the most anti hindu language than dmk so all political parties are doing polarization politics what prevents bjp to do it and bjp has not done that if they could have done that earlier now mohan sil asras can be used for that because it will get traction in the people now nobody is going to speak about this issue now who is going to set the narrative if bjp could have set the hindu narrative some 3 months back then all these things will add up to your political campaign so that narrative is not being set so this is not going to contribute uh, for you immensely in uh, in terms of votes thank you sir and and has the nagar koil candidate been decided can you put up the the sheet sheet please the next next page please it's got bigger font next page please okay nagar koil has not been decided yet sir go ahead sir but kanyakumari is nagar koil now kanyakumari oh, nagar okay. koil kanyakumari is the is okay. kanyakumari yeah okay 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 after there are two different ones no no after reorganization it has become that is what i said the... okay go ahead So, so sorry about this sir we are already 39 minutes into this program okay. and we we want to cover one more candidate and then we will viewers will pick up again next week and go in in depth on the other uh, untouched constituencies i want to talk about the former governor former uh, president of the bjp tamil sai soundarajan and she is contesting from chennai side to me that comes as a complete surprise because the last time she contested from i think thootukodi if i remember correctly Yeah, you are right. She has contested from almost all parts of Tamil Nadu, and lost. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, she contested from North Chennai. She contested from uh, Velachery Assembly constituency. She contested, I think, from Virudhunagar. Sorry, from uh, uh, Virugambakam Assembly segment. She contested in uh, Radhapuram Assembly segment once. So she has not contested from Jaffna, California, and in New York. she has contested from almost everywhere in tamil nadu from south to north and look i mean this is something which is crazy for me that if you are a political leader you have to nurse a constituency as a beginner you are not narendra modi right you can go and contest anywhere and win elections and i mean this is something uh, uh which i can't understand that uh, a person contesting from any seat so that means that uh, you have not put in the hard work somebody else in the party has put in the hard work and you are paradropped in 
and uh, how will you get traction with the cadres then and uh, uh, this is surprising number 2 she is contesting from south chennai what is the strength of bjp in south chennai apart from one constituency that is t nagar when hr raja contested she he secured around 28000 votes okay apart from uh, other elections because i mean uh, leave alone when you contested uh, uh, in alliance with the admk you won mailapur constituency once where we have the alliance with the admk just tell me one constituency that they have secured around 35000 plus votes in any of these elections no nowhere and again in I mean, as far as chennai is concerned bjp is saying that okay some areas some posh areas that you have a very good uh, you know reach but one thing that you need to understand in chennai every posh area is accompanied with the slum area and the number of votes is almost <laughs> one needs the other <laughs> okay the number of votes okay i mean i i i, I mean i calculate the square feet votes in a, a thousand of a thousand two hundred square feet house will have two votes in uh, tnagar in the next right. i mean the slum which is adjoining there in 1200 uh, square feet in a slum you will have around 45 votes yes about as far as these two votes are concerned you are not sure whether they are going to come to the police sta polling station or not so time and again bjp is making this mistake of uh, saying that we are going to win south madras i mean uh, it is totally out of their bounds because i am in i mean uh, i mean after my education i shifted to chennai so i am very much familiar with what is happening in chennai and uh, uh, look what work dmk is doing in the slums of chennai i am a witness to it i think you visited some of our programs recently yes i did yes i did very okay. impressive program so, yeah so so we have uh, you know all the people are from slums am i right yes 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 okay so we have a have a presence in almost most of the slums in chennai so uh, bjp is a is a non contender in south chennai this is one thing that you have to understand and uh, people say that okay you have a very big chance or something else just uh, show me one election that they have say, touched 30000 votes in any one assembly constituency in the history no not till today then how people are uh you know expecting south chennai to go the bjp way i am uh, i mean i mean uh, it's not i am sounding as something bad because this is what electoral ar arithmetic usually goes this way this is how polling happens and this is something that we need to understand if okay you have a possibility but if that possibility is there then you should have started the work one year back but you have not done that yeah somehow i feel like uh, candidates like sd surya were hard done by because uh, i know he has at least tried to work in the constituency i may not say that i'm not going to say that he had a winnable strategy there but uh, i don't know sir, uh, we have i am sorry to say he is a good friend of mine i want to see him as a parliamentarian as a friend yes okay but election work is not social media work i don't want to go further into that <laughs> well um, viewers there is a lot of stuff that uh, bala gautaman has left unsaid if you think about what he is saying you'll understand what his uh, intent is uh, he certainly uh, puts his uh, uh, money where his mouth is he has done extraordinary amount of work i can just go on and i was witness to some things this time in my trip to chennai i mean sir naman to you you've done this thing selfless and and more power to you sir and we have a lot of questions i'm going to try and see if we can take three or four questions and then we unfortunately we have another program coming up in 40 minutes so we have to put a gap otherwise i would let's keep going so let's have a few questions please magnet mm -hmm. ranga wants to know jay shri ram seems bjp is working with a strategy for tn given the names announced for tn can we expect a record performance will dmk get a huge shock and admk regret it is stand it stand on bjp well uh, jdmk is having the two leaf symbol so that is going to split the anti dmk vote so dmk is going to gain that is one thing for sure that is the field position as on today and admk 
will be out of existence in the next elections. I think it is going to be Anna Malai versus Uday Nidhi in the upcoming elections. I am sure about it. It's BJP versus us. BJP will emerge as a major opposition party after this elections. You can't expect BJP to win seats. But BJP, uh, from here on, this is a launch pad for BJP. And uh, 2026, if not 26, uh, 2031 will be a BJP government in Tamil Nadu. If uh, BJP is going to plan properly and work. So uh, the strategy will get them votes. But winning a seat, that is uh, and, uh, securing that uh, 35 plus percentage mark in, an, uh, in a parliament constituency, I have to fingers crossed. Next one, please. Uh, Heman Shahji, thank you so much. Namaskar. And uh, uh, thank you so much for your generous donation. Kushanan Keshavji is asking, uh, Rumors are doing the rounds. Vanati Srinivasan might quit BJP. Is High Command making a mistake by fielding Annamalai in DMK stronghold constituency? Sir, even if Annamalai loses, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, mean, I just want to continue that then uh, because it's a lack of time that we have come to the next constituency. Yeah, yeah, Annamalai, right, yeah, yeah. Annamalai losing election is not an issue. Annamalai losing election is again going to be a plus for BJP because ADMK will be wiped off after this elections. So Annamalai is going to emerge as a big leader in the Congo belt for that matter. And that will help BJP immensely in the upcoming elections. It's a strategy. It's, I mean, whether Annamalai wins or loses, Annamalai is going to emerge as a big leader. And this election is a test for him. Because if he is able to, if BJP is able to, BJP alliance is able to push the ADMK, into a third position in many, in most of the constituencies, then BJP's work will be uh, phenomenal from here on to 2026. So it's a strategy. BJP knows that anomaly may lose because because I mean, if I have this calculation around, BJP will be having the because yes, he is having an outside chance. I don't say that he will definitely lose. He has he has got a chance. I do agree with that. He has got a chance. But the thing is, it is a launch pad for Anamalai to take on the DMK. This is something that we need to understand. And if he is going to emerge as a big leader in the Congo belt, whatever support base ADMK now commands in Congo belt is going to come to the BJP. And then again, if BJP is going to do the social engineering with the one-year party, with the Konar party, which now they are doing in this parliament. Already they have done it in 2014. If they are able to do it successfully, then Anamalai, if he is able to rally people around and take people along with him, then that will be a game changer for uh, come upcoming elections in Tamil Nadu. And I think that BJP is calculating on that lot. And I don't think that Anamalai is not a person who is going to shy away with the defeat. He is a fighter. He is a bond fighter, which is what I feel. So he will come out with vengeance and he will work through. And your question is about Vanathri Srinivasan might quit BJP. I don't think that she will do that. I may be having some differences of opinion with her as well as um, with her attitude and uh, with this fast style of functioning. But I can't uh, find a fault with her leaning towards ideology. And uh, I know her from her ABUP days. And she has done many sacrifices during her college days. So I don't think that uh, she will quit. If she is doing that, then uh, I, don't th I don't think that she will do because she was not brought up like that. Next question, please. Shankar VK wants to know, Hi, Bala sir. Will Annamalai highlight more on Modi achievements or would strongly talk against the misrule of DMK to pull voters to his side? To me, exposing DMK will be the better option. I mean, uh, positive politics has got no place in India, especially in Tamil no. Nadu. Sir, no place anywhere, sir. <laughs> I might add this. <laughs> okay, it doesn't have any place. So the best thing is that Anamalai has to do two things. One is about BJP's misrule. Number two is BJP uh, has to highlight that if DMK votes comes back to power, it will be there will be a Hindu genocide. 
and this is some common type of uh, propaganda bjp has to set in if these two things go together bjp has got a better chance next one please sarvani tumku he wants to know uh, sir do you really think dmk has time till 2026 i feel their drug racket itself will put udanidhi behind the bars i am not sure about it because all depends on the election results of 2024 and i am not sure about the sincerity of bjp government to get dmk leaders behind bars i mean in politics how background negotiations will go on i am not sure about it if that if uh, bjp is so particular or sincere around these issues i think the 2g case should have come up if that they are so sincere about it the telephone exchange case of maran could have been taken up and these thing dr swami is highlighting again and again what the bjp is rolling getting those guys behind bars since they have not done that i don't know why they have not done that so i am not sure how bjp will behave uh, but i hope that bjp will not betray the nation that is one hope i have with bjp but as far as these political things are concerned uh, they are playing more political cards than patriotic cards this is what i feel of it very honest and correct observation in my opinion because i agree with your view point next one please kota murthy wants to know sir if annamale is contesting from coimbatore how can he campaign for others because he has to concentrate on his own seat uh i think annamalai is having a charisma of doing it because uh, already prime minister has campaigned in two of his constituent one two three four kind of his constituencies so one major set of campaign has been concluded and again if my annamalai is able because again annamalai has visited all assembly constituencies that means if he travel one constituency per day then he has already spent 6 days in all parliamentary constituencies because of one assembly per day if it is two right. then you can say around three constituencies has already one round he has finished and now anamale has to go at least to one day per constituency that itself is enough two oh sorry uh, two constituencies per day that is enough for anamale one major rally in a constituency or three rallies in three constituencies nearby constituencies if bjp is going to organize it in that way then anomaly can concentrate 50% on his own constituency and 50% on other constituencies i think that's enough for him as far as coimbatore is concerned because you know uh, he is having that magnetic power as far as the youngsters and women are concerned as far as the ground reality is concerned so uh, he can uh, able to manage those uh, things and again all india bjp will put in all its effort in coimbatore to make anamalai win so people from the nearby constituencies can be pulled into that constituency to take care of each and every segment and these things the party will do so with his charisma i think it's it's well and good i mean he has to contest because he has to contest in a way whether he wins or loses it doesn't matter but the thing is if bjp is going to come to the second position then that is the starting point for becoming a contest between dmk and bjp with the admk nowhere in the equation that will be the first step for bjp to establish its role in tamil nadu thank you sir next question please uh, vignesh prabhu wants to know naina nagendran would have fielded uh, i think has been fielded from tinnalveli yeah i mean there is yes. a mistake in the that is the mistake in the constituency list now they have changed and now he is fielded I mean the new list says he is from uh, tinnalveli yeah Yes, indeed, sir. Um, thank you so much. And viewers, we'll be back every week looking at some more critical contests like this. And Bala Gautam Ji brings with him a world of experience. You know, uh, the idea of P Gurus is to give you a 360 degree view, not just take everything sugar coated. I want you to understand that tomorrow, Sri Ram Sachadri will be on our channel. You might hear a slightly different story. At the same time, remember that winning elections is not as easy as it's made out to be. Like what he said. you know you can't fight it on social media alone you have to be there in person you have to look at it you have to do the work and and there are lots of other factors also that come into play elections are not one on by using your head they are one using your heart 
So one thing just I need to add. One thing yeah. I need to add, Shreyaji. One thing for the viewers, I'm telling. One, if a small parliamentary constituency may have around 1,500 to 1,800 booths, polling booths. If it's a bigger con constituency, it goes up to 2,400 booths. If you are really going to be in a contest, you need to be in a fighting mode in lot less than 85% of the booths. For to be there in a booth, you require around 15 people working in the booth during the election days. So average at 2,000, if you round up around 2,000, 80% of 2,000 is 1,600 booths. 1,600 into 20. That is around uh, 32,000 people have to work at the booth level relentlessly for the next 20 days. Then alone you can win an election. That to be yeah. there in the fight in an election. And winning is yes, again a different matter altogether. This is something that we need to understand. The magnitude of uh, uh, work which is required at the field level. They need to know how many coconuts are in each coconut tree. To that level, they also need to know the people who are in that booth area. It's very, very important. So, thank you so much, sir. We'll be back again next week with more discussions on this. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar. Namaskar.